I'll talk about all three episodes of the final season of The Bad Batch that premiered all together because I think they just went really well together, they flowed perfectly, and they set up the season in a way that I absolutely love. Not even to mention they brought in a little bit of Legends with the planet that a lot of it took place on. If you haven't read Legends and you don't really know anything about Legends, this planet is called Tantus. This is where the Emperor had a lot of really secret projects that, like he says in the show, many would consider abominations. There are many even within our own ranks who would consider much of your work an abomination. I mean, they're doing some pretty messed up stuff on Tantus. There's a lot of crazy projects happening in that facility, and they kind of talk about it a little bit, but they don't really show anything else. The one thing to really focus on is Project Necromancer. So why is it so focused on this one specific experiment? It kind of brings me to my least favorite point of the entirety of the Bad Batch. Its sole purpose really is to set up the sequels. I think a lot of us are just really lucky that it's about characters that we love and it's clones. However, I do see it a little bit differently than some people might because I don't see it setting up the current actual sequels that we have. It's setting up some other set of sequels that I'm gonna make in my headcanon. Before the sequel defenders and their superhero capes jump into my comments telling me how I don't understand good character development or I don't understand the films at all and I never watched them. This for the first time ever anywhere, the 45th. I promise I have. I've read all of the novels. I've watched all of the movies multiple times trying to understand them. I've even read the comics and watched the shows and it still doesn't make sense. They're just not that good. But I'm really happy that you guys like them. I don't have a problem with you liking them. That's not my issue. So go to the comments if you want, but I can tell you right now, I hate the sequels. I hate what it did to some of my favorite characters. I hate the story because it doesn't make sense. And anything you say in the comments most likely will not change my mind. Anyways, turns out I was correct in my assumption that this season would be kind of a split storytelling type of season where one half of it's gonna follow Omega and Crosshair and the other half is gonna follow Wrecker and Hunter. So in the first three episodes, they really put a focus on Tantus, only giving us one episode of Hunter and Wrecker trying to find Omega wherever she's at. The other two episodes following Omega and Crosshair really wanted to hone in on Project Necromancer and everything that's going on in that facility. It also wanted to show you the importance of Omega to the Empire. So there's obviously been a sizable time jump from the previous season to this final season, and it's indicated by a couple different things. And the first thing being Hunter mentioning that Omega's been wherever she's at for far too long, and he's not even gonna make her wait another day. The other thing is that Omega has hair, a lot of it. She actually has her hair up in like a ponytail type of deal. She also seems to be really settled into her routines on Tantus. I think the thing I'm most excited about is going to be the redemption arc of Crosshair, even though I know he's most likely going to die, and I'm actually gonna predict that. At the end of his redemption arc, he's going to sacrifice himself for everyone. He's going to sacrifice himself. No, you can't! But hey, it's okay. If they keep losing members of the Bad Batch, Hunter and Wrecker found some younger clones that they are just gonna bring onto their team, and they're gonna be a big happy family. I think those younger members will eventually become members of the Bad Batch or form some type of group like them because they look up to them so much. And with Omega and Crosshair escaping in the final episode, also, Dr. Hemlock finding out that Omega's blood is the one that they can replicate the M count, which, by the way, are midichlorians, so that's a thing again. I think I might know where a major fight is going to take place. So when Hunter and Wrecker found the younger clones, they tell them that the fighting is done, they don't need to be soldiers anymore. They need to go figure out who they want to be, and there's a place that they can take them on an island and you know exactly where that's from. The island is called Pabu Pabu, I don't know how to say it, P-A-B-U. I also think this island is where Omega and Crosshair would go after their escape. So it's likely that all of them are gonna go there at the same time and run into each other. Once the whole team gets back together on the island and they talk about everything that's happened and Omega tells them what's actually going on over on Tantus and talks about the facility, all the experiments that she knows about, the Empire is coming. Do not come. Do not come. And they're coming for Omega. Hemlock is going to use everything the Empire will give him. And I think what's going to happen is Palpatine is going to give Hemlock the greatest weapon the Empire has at that moment. Vader. I'm gonna come! Once everything goes down on the island and whatever happens, happens, they're going to try to destroy Tantus because Omega is going to talk about the dangers of leaving that facility open. Obviously, they're going to be targeting Hemlock and the facility itself. 
So I think in the end, what's most likely going to happen is a ton of the clones are going to be wiped out, destroying the facility and killing Hemlock. Depending on the way that they want to take this season, they could make this the reason that there are only a couple clones left that we saw in Rebels. I just think that these first three episodes set up the season so nicely and it's hard to predict which way it's going to go. There are so many different paths because of how these first three episodes played out that they could take this story and kind of shift it and change canon. I do love the focus on Project Necromancer on Tantus, but I just find it a little strange that this is the one thing that they pick from the sequels that they feel they need to completely justify, when I think there are so many other things wrong with the sequels, like the complete collapse of Luke Skywalker. To be honest, Palpatine's return isn't even that much of a surprise, especially if you know anything about Legends or you've read Legends because Palpatine does clone himself in Legends. I just think there are so many different things that you need to convince fans of in the sequels to actually make it loved by most people. And my lord, they collapsed Luke Skywalker's character faster than Anakin destroyed the Tusken Raider camp. The women and children too. I will say, the final season of The Bad Batch does have me really excited for Star Wars because I think it's just so well done. The animation is fantastic, the characters are great, they're staying true to a lot of the previous characters that we all love, like from the Clone Wars. I also just love the time period that it's set in right after the empire takes place and vader's starting to get established and palpatine's taking over the galaxy bit by bit i just love this time period of star wars i think it's the best i mean them staying true to original characters from the clone wars series is a pretty rare thing for disney obviously because you guys know how much i don't like the sequels overall i'm gonna have to give the first three episodes a nine out of ten the only reason I'm not giving it a 10 out of 10 is because I do think they're missing an opportunity on Tantus, at least in the first three episodes, to build out more of a threat and give more of a reason for them to go destroy Tantus. I do love Project Necromancer, but there's a very large opportunity for more world building and more of a threat buildup. I just think if they were to show just a couple more of the experiments or even talk about them a little bit it would show the audience how much a threat that facility is to the galaxy. I'm honestly excited to see where this story goes because I do love the Bad Batch and I love these characters. There are so many different routes it could go. I made some predictions, we'll see what happens. And we're gonna see how it changes actual canon and how it changes my head canon. Let me know what you thought of the first three episodes in the comments below. If you want more Star Wars content from me, make sure you subscribe and share this with all the Star Wars fans that you know of. I mean, I don't just do reviews. I got a lot of what ifs. like this one. I appreciate you for watching and may the force be with you.